Oh, we're going to get it. Phil. Hi, Gary. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, it's been a while since I saw you out here in L.A. Yeah, I hope to be back sometime and visit again. And I, let me set this up. A couple hours ago, your brother-in-law, George, calls me, hey, I just realized that I wasn't being fed a line, that my brother-in-law actually was on the Titan a couple of years ago. You want to have him on the show? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, let's get started here. You sure. did that voyage to the Titanic on the Titan two years ago? Correct. Uh, July of 2021, yes. Bill, why did you do that? Why would you? Okay, let's, let's start <laughs> from the beginning of why. How do you start thinking about doing this? Um, I don't know if I started thinking about doing it. I think that uh, I am an adventurous type person, adventurous uh, spirit by nature. Um, and I've done a lot of things that are adventurous and exciting and interesting. So uh, I enjoy seeing and doing a lot of new experiences. Um, and, and I do it for myself, actually. Like you say, George wasn't even aware of it. So it's not like, you know, I, I do something and, and want to post it so everyone looks and you know uh you know look what i did type of thing but but i enjoy doing different things and fortunately since i've been retired um i had the opportunity to, to do that uh i joined uh several years ago a club here in los angeles called the los angeles adventures club they've been around for about 100 years and they have a lot of really profound uh members um and uh, so, you know, my personal experience of doing adventure and things like that was fairly limited compared to a lot of these people. But um, uh, when I found out through networking there at the club that uh, there was an operation that they were planning on and been planning on for a while, uh, and this was in, uh, the spring of 2021, um, when I found out that they were going to do this, I contacted them and, um, and got some basic information. And because I was in the travel business, I spoke with them about me doing some potential marketing and things of that nature to assist in, in the, the pricing of, of the trip. But I kind of got in under, under the wire at the last minute. Um, and uh, made the commitment to do it. So it really touched all of my buttons in terms of the history um, going down there. Uh, it was the, the, the history, historic aspect of it. Um, the fact that not that many people have actually seen um, close up the, the Titanic. Um, and uh, I think those are the, the main things that drew, drew me to it. All right, Bill, let me ask you this. How much did you pay to do it? Uh, I, I, was, uh, I made a confidential agreement with uh, Stockton, uh, so I'm, I'm going to respect that. But, but okay. it, was six, it was six figures, and uh, okay. I, I was fortunate because, you know, California real estate went up, and I sold my house, and, you know, I had the funds. So the timing was, was good for me. Um, I had the time, uh, uh, some money. But to be honest with you, it's not money. I, I you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a billionaire or even multimillionaire. So for me, the money was a big aspect. I couldn't afford to lose the money. And if I went or, you know, signed up and got sick or had an issue or whatever, I was going to be out that money. So, so, you know, that was scary too. The financial. Let me ask you something there where I've read people had signed up for these excursions and something happened where they couldn't complete the voyage to the Titanic. There's a no refund pol policy. Is that how that works? Correct. Really? So if, if it's their fault, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because uh, many times the, the, the dives are canceled because of weather conditions or other conditions. Um, so I think that's what's, uh, uh, what's driving that. So I think, um, it, it makes sense that, uh, uh, they're not going to be able to, um, return the money if something happens beyond their control. 
Okay, and when does that non-refundable thing kick in? If you get to, did you leave out of Newfoundland? Correct. That was and another is issue. Is that where it starts? Where you, if you're on the boat and something happens, uh, then you don't get the refund. Anything before that? Is there any refund possible in the sequence? No. No, I don't believe so. As soon as you say, I'm going to do it, it doesn't matter. That's, That's the way it goes. That's true. I, you know, um, there, um, being in the travel business, I, I know that there is, you know, uh, uh, travel uh, protection or tour, uh, you know, tour uh, trip insurance. But, um, you know, the, nothing would qualify in this particular um, uh situation i mean you know maybe you could go to lloyd's of london and have them do a special policy but normally speaking it's just not available so yeah you know getting back to the original situation is it was scary you know that's uh money that scary. i really couldn't scary afford in that you wouldn't get a refund now let's get yeah. to the real scary part you actually you get on a ship you go out to the site how long does that take from newfoundland to getting to the site a, a couple of days Okay, and how was that ride? Uh, not bad. Uh, we were on a different support ship. Uh, the uh, support ship that we were on was the Horizon Arctic, which was actually instrumental in doing some of the uh, search and rescue. Um, but uh, yeah, so that uh, it, it's a nice ship. It's um, it's it's a big ship, and it's designed to service the offshore oil rigs and and such. And the Titan was on that ship, right? Sure. Uh -huh. And they so they put you through some training. You get to sit inside there as you're going out to the site. How does that work? Yes, um, that that's correct. Uh, they have a series of of uh, training programs. Um, uh, prior to going, I did you know a little research on my own, in uh, particularly in uh, re you know uh, respect to. Uh, the qualifications. Uh, f fortunately, um, for me, I'm not really claustrophobic, and you know, being from you know Michigan, Chicago area, uh, I have a pretty high tolerance for cold um, because it gets fairly cold down there. There's no heating mechanism in the submersible. Uh, the heat pretty much comes from the body heat of the individual that are there and then it condenses uh, a little bit as well. But so the front section, um, which has the, the um, uh, t um, uh, it has the metal dome with uh, the port to, you know, to, to look out at. Okay, wait till we, uh, I wanna take this in yeah. steps. So while you're heading out to the site, you get to go inside there and sit for a while. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, I can see where I could do that for a few minutes. And then you come out. The day you're going down, you're in there and they bolt you in. Correct. Okay. There are five of you. Yes. And it's tiny in there, right? Relatively, yes. Uh -huh. Relatively, yes. 22 feet, I believe, and five people. Now, any change of thought when they bolted the hatch? No. Not, no. not at all. Okay. The, the previous, the, uh, sorry to interrupt, Gary, but the previous day um, when the other uh, team was, was going down, uh, one of my assignments, because everybody works there, different jobs, but one of my assignments was to actually bolt the other crew in. So I had the big wretched wrench and was bolting them in. So, so I knew the process and um, yeah, that was just, okay, let's, let's go. Okay, you're bolted in. It's on a platform that gets lowered off the back of the ship, right? It's a uh, slid off the back. Yes, it's the whole your your tank slides off the back. And how long do you float before you start going down? Well, like like I say, there's a like there's a sled because you know the the submersible sits on top of this sled, um, and the sled is uh, goes down the ramp. And once it's uh, in in the water, um, they begin the process of releasing uh, air so that the whole 
unit starts to submerge. And once it's the whole unit is submerged, the uh, divers come over uh, and unhook the submersible from the sled. And then the submersible starts to uh, float on its own. Mm -hmm. And once it's detached, then the process of releasing uh, ballast from the uh, submersible to descend uh, is, is done. And it's two and a half hours to the wreckage? Correct. And say a half hour in, you're feeling fine. Uh, what's the atmosphere at that point, an hour in? Um, an hour in, it's there's not much to look at. Once you get down, you know, several hundred feet, it's all black. And um, because the batteries are very, the battery life is very critical to, for all operations. Uh, we don't leave the lights on or, you know, to, to uh, conserve the battery. So it's pretty much dark, uh, you know, outside, inside as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we listen to, uh, you know, music. Um, you know, that's one of the things. But in the process, we're also learning a lot of information from uh, not only uh, uh, Stockton, but from PH Nard Gillet. And uh, PH, he's just a wonderful guy. I became good good buddies with him. But he he's been to the Titanic more than anyone. And he was so instrumental in helping us understand what we were looking at once we got down there. But um, to kind of go over really quickly, um, to give you an insight into what happened. So again, there was dive number one, which was uh, some other crew members, uh, including um, you know an astronaut and some others. Um, and then it was, uh, our turn to go. And uh, so there was two other mission specialists and then, um, as I say, PH Nargley and Stockton Rush. And so we uh, went, it starts at six in the morning, the process, and then we uh, we went down eventually. And in the, about not quite halfway down, we also lost communication. And uh, the communication is a very challenging thing because it's not really a radio communication. It's a, it's like a, uh, uh, a, like an old tele or something where the it's, it's sonar sends these signals and then it interprets it and changes it. So it's basically text. Um, and because of that, you know, there was like, okay, that's a, a concern because uh, the communication uh, outside of just safety issues and reasons, it also allows us to direct our descent so that we, we end up landing near the, the wreck. Right. You have to have the mothership in communication to find the wreck. Otherwise, yes. game over. Now, yeah. when, when, wait, when that moment happened, Bill, when they said, oh, we've lost communication, what's going through your mind there? And how long did you lose communication? We we lost communication for probably about an hour, uh, but Yo. there was, yeah. There what were, were you thinking? At that time, the focus was on, you know, everything was fine. Everyone was okay. And uh, we were looking at options. Um, and uh, because some other issues came up that were probably more concerning than the lack of uh, communication. And uh, that like was, what? well, the... Um, Propulsion unit on the one side was not operating. I think the uh, the battery connection to that was not uh, um, uh, was uh, defective. Uh, and uh, the other issue. Um, so a after that happened, we made the decision to ascent. But then the the third issue, which was critical, is that there's a mechanism that releases the weights to allow the sub to ascend and that mechanism was not functioning so uh at that point we were just floating and um you know without propulsion without steerable propulsion 
and, and no communication and um, and at that point no no way to get back up but uh, you know again Stockton had been through a lot of scenarios before so he was aware uh, and he designed the setup and he knew the the weights and and how it all worked so he determined that uh, if we were able to rock the sub back and forth or, or uh, you know from side to side that we could uh, get the chute where these weights were loaded they're basically big iron pipes and um, to get it to at an angle where the pipe would actually come out and uh, so we we did that and uh, so we we went back and forth back and forth several times and then finally we heard a clunk and it's like uh, that's good okay so, so you didn't make it to the site no that okay. day okay that day you went back the next day holy shit i can't believe i mean i'm getting freaked out just hearing this and now that we know what happened this past week and i don't know i'll ask you about your thoughts on that but now that you've gone through this and that was before it had gone through a number of other uh, runs and obviously there's something that went wrong the, they're saying that this was not really holding up well as it kept diving because of the pressure that's what we're hearing now add into that if you want you know in in retrospect uh yeah you could pick everything apart um and at the time i had enough information and, and enough background because I, i'm familiar with uh in in the aircraft industry being in a travel business and uh, uh my uncle had an airplane that had a uh a uh, carbon uh, fiber fuselage uh, was, you know, and uh, and they had a lot of issues with the FAA and getting it approved because it was so new, and that's what Stockton shared with me is that it was a similar situation, and because of the uh, basic design of the submersible, uh, there's no category that uh, that they could um, put it into. To get it certified, but they did many tests to to the bottom and back, and uh, you know I was familiar with the uh, the design, and um, I felt confident that uh, it would hold up. And, and it so you went back up, you got back up, and then the next day you went back down and did make it to the site. Yes, I think uh, every after every dive, uh, there's a. Uh, a meeting and a debriefing and we determined the issues uh, and those issues were corrected and uh, Stockton came to each one of us and uh, asked us directly do you want to go and my answer was yes and part of the, uh, the the reason is that you know situations where everything goes good um, you're pretty reliant on uh, I mean uh, you know uh, as far as the individuals that their capabilities it's hard to determine, but in situations where things go bad and you're under pressure, you know, how people react and respond and take care of things. And, and that's what gave me the reassurance is because the way that uh, both PH and Stockton handled that was uh, confidence for me to say, yeah, I'm in. I'll go so with you, you guys. You went down the next day. Now, there are no seats on this thing and it's cylindrical, right. so you can't even sit up straight. Correct. How was that after a while? That has to be uncomfortable. You can't stand up. That's correct. Um, uh, as I was saying, be, you know, because of, uh, you know, um, I, I don't mind the cold. Uh, the front section of the uh, sub where the, uh, where, where the porthole, the viewing uh, window is located, is made out of t titanium, the whole front. And that becomes very cold in that area. So it's probably 10, 15 degrees cooler there than the rest of the sub. Um, but as uh, so I was the person that was up in the front and um, everyone was happy that I, you know, volunteered to do that. So I kind of had my own little section in the in the, 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 uh, the front section and then the rest four were uh, sitting across from each other. Um, and um, at that point, uh, uh, the council, which is basically uh, 
PlayStation uh, uh, device along with the computer, um, that was in the front, the very front, or the, the I should say the back, uh, because I was in the front, uh, and that uh, was was in, in the rear. So um, yeah, so everyone was seated seated accordingly, and from time to time we could move around and stretch. Is there a toilet? There is a toilet. There is. It's it's basically uh, the uh, so I was kind of sitting on the toilet. It's it's basically a little can uh, with a cover over it, um, and for for uh, you know hopefully emergency use. But I think we all use it a little bit. Okay, how pleasant is that? Is there anybody? in our case it was all guys, uh, so there was not no major issues. Um, but it, you know it was. It, uh, you know, I would say that uh, it was adequate. Yeah, that's not enough for me. Okay, so you make it down to the wreckage and you are notified that you're coming on to the wreckage, right? And to get ready because everybody's got to take a turn to look through that porthole, right? Not really. Um, I, I was the one looking through the porthole for the most part. And I've got some video of that. But, um, but uh, the... Submersible has uh, cameras mounted on the top and the bottom, and you can see, in some cases, a better view uh, looking at the, the screen of the laptop. Well, wait a minute. That's like going to a concert and watching the screen instead of the act on stage. I, yeah. You might as well stay home, I think. Yeah, yeah you're right there. Um, but, um, yeah, I think everyone did get a chance to come up to the front. I'm not sure Stockton did or not, but... But the the others did, and and uh, so for the most part, I was up front. But also, once we got to the the wreck itself, then PH was right next to me. Now, because he knows the Titanic better than anyone, he was able to. The, the last time he was down was about twenty years ago, so he was able to point out a lot of the changes that have happened in the wreck. Um, things that are no longer there or things that have been, you know, more debilitated. Um, and, uh, but it was also very interesting to me because, you know, he, he was telling me about this is the captain's quarters and, um, you know, the specific locations and stuff. So How long do you tour around the wreckage? And the wreckage is in two parts separated by it is, several correct. hundred yards, right? Yes. Uh, that's, uh, we did not have enough uh, battery power to uh, to visit the aft section, so we focused and concentrated on the bow section. So we were able to basically uh, go around the uh, the bow section, and uh, so we approached it from the one one side of the the bow. And even though you know the bow section sank first and was deeply embedded into the sand, when we first you know, from the ocean floor, we were, you know, maybe 10 feet above the floor. Um, looking up and seeing it for the first time was pretty impressive. Uh, it was still very tall. And then we, uh, once we got there, we kind of uh, slowly motored, uh, and propelled our, our way over the ship into the, the, the front to see the actual bow section. How long do you do that before you start going back up? A couple hours. A couple hours you're down there. Okay. Did you mm -hmm. see anything that really stuck with you as far as clothing? I've seen pictures of boots and jackets and stuff down there. Did you see any of that? Anything of human connection? Not of human connection. Um, yeah. The the uh, My understanding is that everything is, especially after 100 years dissolved, uh, the process of uh, making shoes uh, using tannins um, uh, make them unique because they're sometimes one of the few things that uh, that are still there. But you know, all the other uh, things generally are dissolved um, by then, including any human uh, remains. And the ascent was uneventful, and you went home, and you were happy with the whole experience. Correct. When you heard Sunday that it was missing, what were you thinking? Well, the initial thought was, okay, you know, um, first of all, who was on, on board? 
And uh, again, I really feel for the three uh, mission specialists that were on. Uh, I don't know them, but you know, my heart goes out to them and their family. But when I heard um, that both uh, Stockton and PH were on board, I kind of had a little bit of mixed emotions. One is that uh, that was a good thing because had they sent maybe a, a inexperienced uh, pilot down, um, then, you know, that there that, that could be some concerns. Uh, PH is also a very experienced uh, submersible pilot. So the fact that you had probably two of the best uh, in the world, um, you know, or a couple of, you know, certainly top, um, that was reassuring. I read where you sign a waiver and on the first page, the word death is mentioned several times. Yes. Yeah. How, does, how is that worded? Uh, I'd have to look back. I didn't. It say, says you could die, basically. Yeah. 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 I think not only that, but um, uh, Stockton's very, very upfront about everything. And so he minces no words. He, he uh, you know, makes no bones about that. And that's why I wanted to kind of set the record straight because a lot of people were kind of indicating that, you know, he was falsifying information or not telling the whole thing. And uh, that wasn't true. You know, he told me it was right up front, it wasn't certified. He also told me several times that in the event of uh, uh, any sort of uh, a, a breach in the pressure of the hull, it's pretty much instantaneous implosion. And uh, he said, but don't worry, you won't know. That's nice. Yeah. That's what happened, no doubt, Sunday. And they're sitting there about an hour and a half in and then, hello, Tina Turner. That's how it went, right? And I guess that's the way to go. If, if you have to go, yes. Yeah. Well, you obviously had no problem with that. You did it, you did it twice. Mm -hmm. So you're here to tell about it. And I, I'm too claustrophobic. I know your brother-in-law, George, is too. He can't even, we would go to a parking garage and he said, I can't go in there. I can't even pull into a parking garage, he said. So this is way out of his well, uh, comfort zone. Yeah, uh, probably a lot of medication would be required <laughs> to get George uh, in there. But, right, and uh, you sleep through the, the uh, actual tour of the wreckage. That would be interesting. Yeah, true. For but, uh, six figures. But he does uh, he does enjoy adventure. I know that, too. Yeah, but nothing that's enclosed, I can tell you that. True. Bill, thank you. Right. I know this was last minute. We appreciate you sharing this with us. No, it's nice seeing you again, Gary. You, yeah. look, uh, you look just as young as the last time I saw you. No, this is all surgery now, Bill. And, <laughs> Good. Yeah, this head comes off at midnight on a stand, and then I go back <laughs> to my regular head. Uh, good. All right. Thanks, Bill. Take care.